This is a sports catastrophe production. This guy, number 11, Edgar Martinez, was born on January 2nd, 1965. One of the most amazing players in Seattle Mariners history. This is a photo of the great moment in 1995 when his double helped the Seattle Mariners win a playoff series, their first playoff series ever in history. But we'll get to that later. So, Edgar Martinez, and I did accident. I thought I saw 65, but he was born January 2nd, 1963, Edgar Martinez. From Puerto Rico, he played in Major League Baseball, mostly as a DH and third baseman for the Seattle Mariners from 87 to 2004 and served as hitting coach for three years. So, this is a rarity in the 1990s of a player only playing for one team his whole career. He wasn't really regarded as, regarded as a prospect, but the Mariners signed him as an international free agent in 1982 at the age of 19 and was given a signing bonus. He made his major league debut in 1987, and it took a while until 1990. At the age of 27, he finally got himself a full-time player. And basically, in 1995, he hit the double to help Seattle Mariners baseball. He continued to play until 2004 when injuries forced him to retire. Seven-time All-Star, five-time Silver Slugger, two-time batting champion. He is one of 18... MLB players ever to record a batting average of 300, on base percentage of 400, and a second batting percentage of 500 in 5,000 or more plate appearances. The Mariners have retired as number 11, and he's in the Mariners Hall of Fame. And he was even elected into the Cooperstown Baseball Hall of Fame in 2019. So basically, Edgar came from Puerto Rico, was born in New York City. And then after his parents divorced, he went back to Puerto Rico. However, he taught himself to speak English and use computers. And then while his parents reconciled at age 11, he was back to New York. Well, his brother and sister went back to New York, but Edgar wanted to be with his grandparents. Edgar Martinez was actually inspired to play baseball after watching fellow Puerto Rican Roberto Clemente play the 1971 World Series, which Clemente was one of the, did one of the best moments in history. With one of the one of the best performances in a, a seven game series ever. He played with his cousin Carmelo Martinez, who actually played in the major leagues himself, most notably for San Diego, and part of that 1984 team that took down the Cubs in the NLCS. So he was basically on a semi-pro team, and Martinez attended a tryout held by the Mariners. The Mariners decided to sign him to his contract with a $4,000 small signing bonus, despite the fact that he was working at a factory at night and couldn't swing the bat. But Carmelo, his cousin, said that he should sign. He tried his best and all that. But Edgar Martinez basically had slow time going from single A to double A. The double, the triple A team was in Canada, by the way. Calgary, the Calgary Cannons were the Seattle Mariners triple A affiliate in the nineteen eighties, which was amazing. So basically, Edgar tore up triple A. He made his major league debut September 12, 1987 as a third baseman and did okay. But the Mariners decided to have a commitment to Jim Presley as their third baseman. Edgar went back to AAA, but was called up to the major leagues in May of 88 and went back to Calgary when he was the Pacific Coast League batting champion. So Seattle actually ended up giving Edgar the third baseman spot on opening day 1989, but he struggled and was sent back to AAA. However, you know, he did well in AAA, but not so much in the major leagues. He went to Puerto Rico to play base, winter baseball and did pretty well for himself. Martinez would sign a one-year $90,000 contract in 1990. And Darren Coles was made the Mariners' third baseman instead of Edgar Martinez, even though Jim Presley was in San Diego. However, Coles couldn't field to save a lick, so he, go, he went back to the outfield position and Edgar went back to third base. And then he had a great year, 302 batting average that year. 
So he signed a two-year contract in 91, and he actually did pretty well for himself. He got to the 92 All-Star game for the first time, and he looked good. And Seattle decided to give him a three-year, $10 million contract during the 92 season. He actually ended up winning the American League batting title in 1992. But more so than that, his batting average led all of Ridge League Baseball. The first batting title in Seattle Mariners history. He actually tied Frank Thomas for the most doubles in baseball. Which was amazing. Unfortunately, Edgar's 93 and 94 seasons would be un would be unforgettable for all the wrong reasons. In an exhibition game in Vancouver, Vancouver used to host exhibition baseball games, even though BC Play Stadium is basically a football stadium. Martinez tore his hamstring on an unsipped seam in the turf between first and second base. He just couldn't do it. He had a lot of injuries, even in 94, when Dennis Martinez hit him in the wrist by accident, I assure you. So basically put, Edgar Martinez was the third baseman, but they decided to give him a designated hitter spot. Basically, in the American League, if you have a guy who's really good at hitting but sucks at fielding, you can put him as SNA hitter instead of having him having the pitcher hit. And Edgar Martinez would turn out to be one of the best DHs in Major League history. He was a full time SNA hitter for 95, and he did pretty well for himself. Got to the All Star game, and basically was great. Second AL batting title. And he led the league in runs scored, doubles, on base percentage, and on base plus slugging, or OPS to you and I. He was actually third in MVP voting AL behind Mo Vaughn and Albert Bell. A lot of people were shocked that Mo Vaughn would be the MVP. It should have been Albert Bell, even. So anyway, the double happened. Some context. The Seattle Mariners were in trouble. This was the first time in their 19-year history that the Mariners would make the playoffs. And they had to have a furious comeback in September to overtake the California Angels and win the division. It helped, too, that California was struggling without the Gary Dude Sarcina. So basically, Seattle was the AL West champion after beating the Angels in that famous one-game playoff that basically Louis Soho hit a Little League home run. That term basically means that it's a home run that basically was full of errors and all that. And Randy Johnson pitched his heart out. So the Mariners took on the Yankees in the American League Division Series, which was weird because the first two games were at Yankee Stadium, but the next three were at Seattle's Kingdom because of them winning the division. Edgar Martinez did pretty well, 571 batting average in that five-game series. The Mariners sucked in the first two games. They they rallied a few times, but led by Jim Lairitz home run in the 15th inning off. I would say Tim Belcher. I think I'm right. Tim Belcher. Basically, the Yankees were one win away from knocking the Mariners out of the playoffs. Worst of all was that Seattle was having issues getting money for a new stadium because the kingdom was kind of decrepit, if you basically can believe everything. So basically, there were rumors that Seattle would have to relocate for 1996. So basically, they can't do anything. And their slogan, refuse to lose, was huge. Game three, Seattle easily beat the Yankees. But game four was when Edgar Martinez stepped up for his teammates. Game four, he hit a three-run home run. But the big home run was in the eighth inning off John Wetland when he had a grand slam that broke the 6-6 tie and made it 11-8. In fact, his seven RBIs that day tied a single-game postseason record for RBIs in the game. And I think that still stands. So the series forced game five. Seattle and the Yankees were fighting two for nail. Yankees had a comfortable 4-1 lead headed to the eighth inning when Ken Griffey Jr. came up to the plate. Sorry, 4-2 lead. And Ken Griffey came to the plate and hit a nice wall in right field for a home run and his fifth home run of the series. Make it 4-3. Unfortunately, David Cohn was left in too long. Buck Walter would get a lot of heat for leaving Cohn in, especially with a very young Mariano Rivera in the bullpen. Seattle used some strange bench moves, including a young A-Rod. But Doug Strange got a basis loaded walk in the bait and the game was tied. So anyway, Seattle and the Yankees would go to extra innings. In the 11th inning, the Yankees had it scored a run off Randy Johnson to make it 5-4. And then 
basically Edgar came to the plate with runners on first and third and wrapped a home uh, a hit to left field that off Jack McDowell. That would be huge. Let me play you the audio if I can. And the old one pitch on the way to Edgar Martinez. One run the line down the left field line for a base hit. Here comes Joy. Here is Junior to third base. They're going to wave him in. The throw to the plate will be late. The Mariners are going to play for the American League Championship. I don't believe it. It just continues. Oh, oh, my. So that was huge. The Mariners then took down the New York Yankees to win that series in five games and sent them to the ALCS. Cleveland, unfortunately, would beat them up in six games. And, you know, it was huge. The double was huge because that postseason run helped the public support towards the Mariners, which led stage le the state legislator to enact legislation to fund a dedicated baseball stadium in Seattle. And as Lou Pinella said, it was the hit, the run, the game, the series, and the season that saved baseball in Seattle. I bet you Jason Langford, my buddy, will know the same thing. So Edgar did pretty well for himself and all that. Two. He won the Silver Slugger in 1997. He did pretty well. He was basically one of the best DHs of all time. But, you know, Edgar was huge in that time. All that. Unfortunately, Edgar had injury problems. August 9th, he decided to retire. But, you know, he had a great legacy. A lot of people didn't want to face him. Even Mo Rivera did that, too. Seattle decided to issue anyone number 11 after Edgar left. They retired his jersey in 2017. 2019, he got lucky. Because his last chance for election by the Baseball Raiders of America, and if he missed out on that ballot, basically... He would have had to be voted in by the, the Veterans Committee. But the 2019 ballot was helping. He did it. He got 85% of his of the ballots. The second player to enter the Hall of Fame as a Mariner after the great Ken Griffin Jr. And the sixth player to be elected in his final year of eligibility. Joining Brad Ruffin, Joe Medwick, Ralph Kiner, Tim Raines, and Jim Rice. Incidentally, he actually entered the Hall of Fame with Mo Rivera and Roy Holiday. Basically, yeah, he's a he's a big guy in the Seattle community for helping people out. So yeah, fantastic. Edgar Martinez to me will always be a great hitter. And it's a subject of a Facebook profile pic. A couple years ago when Seattle and Toronto were facing each other, now that my buddy Jason Lundgren and I made a bet on a game. And basically, if Seattle won, then I would have to post my favorite, a picture of my favorite Seattle Mariner on my Facebook profile pic for 24 hours. And if Toronto won, Jason would have to do the same. But Seattle won, and I basically, that, that very night, I think a few minutes after the game ended, I basically figured, who could I put? Griffey? No. So I decided, because I knew Edgar Martinez got the hit that saved Seattle's Baseball team. I'm like, I pay homage to him. So I basically put his Edgar number, Martinez number 11 on and all that. And Jason thought that was great and all that. And I I kind of have a feeling, good thing for Edgar Martinez. He's a, he's one of the best hitters of all time. Some say he's the best DH of all time. A lot of Boston fans will say, heck no, it's David Ortiz. But whatever happens, Edgar Martinez is still a freaking legend. Anyway, this is Jeff Diamond. I do.